and get out. Hey there guys, this is your host Richard with another marvellous video. When season one was about to end, book readers like me and many of you knew about the absolutely shocking death of Lucerus at the hands of Amond and his dragon. We all dreaded it, but knew it was inevitable. I found myself experiencing the exact same feeling when the first episode of season two was about to end. Yes, we'll mourn the death of another young prince lost to the war, and also explore how the whole incident of Blood and Cheese was different from the book, while looking into why showrunner Ryan Condal made these creative choices. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. It's the other one. She's not going to give up the King's Air that easy. Blood and Cheese Incident in the show. Mizaria sets Damon up with a couple of men, men who were vile and violent, and would do nearly anything for money. First, there's Cheese, the rat catcher of the Red Keep's lower levels, who's pretty much bad news all around, like the dude kicks a dog just because he can. Since he's always sneaking around the lower levels of the Red Keep catching rats, he knows his way around without drawing attention. Interestingly enough, Cheese didn't really know his way around the upper levels where the Royals of King's Landing lived. Nevertheless, the other man is Blood, a city guard who doesn't share any love or loyalty for the High Towers and is all too happy to betray them for some coin. Now, just a little backstory. When Rhaenyra found the remains of Arax at the beginning of the episode, she found some degree of closure that she was looking for and returned to Dragonstone, where she demanded Aemon's head. No, not out loud, but that's pretty much what she meant. So, Damon sneaks back into King's Landing, meets up with Blood, and they head off to meet Cheese, who serves as the guide through the tunnels, and Blood is the muscle. Damon instructed them to break into the Red Keep, find Aemon, and take him out. But when they ask what to do if they can't find Aemon, the scene cuts. I'm guessing Damon tells them to nab any Targaryen son, because that's what Blood tells Cheese when he grabs Helena. Yep. So they wriggle through Rat Central beneath the Red Keep and stumble into a room right after Raymond and Kristen Cole have been there. The men were discussing war strategy and shared how they weren't really a fan of Otto Hightower, the current Hand of the King. They split up to find Amond, but instead, Blood hears Cheese shushing someone. It's Helena's room. Inside, Helena's twins, Jaehaerys and Jaehaera, are sleeping. The assassins ask her which one's the boy, and a terrified Helena points to Jaehaerys. No sugarcoating it, they uh, slash the boy's throat and behead him. Helena grabs Jaehaera and escapes the room, only to end up in her mother Alicent's room, who's, uh, hmm, busy with Sir Kristen Cole. Helena's too shocked to even notice and just says, they killed the boy. Man, this clearly cranks everything up to eleven. Aegon and his men, Kristen, Aemond, Otto would be out for blood now, as much as they can get their hands on. Having said that, this whole sequence was heavily watered down, something that started to divide fans. Additionally, they're scared that more changes from the book will be brought into the show. Anyway, now that we know what happened in the show, let's talk about the differences. What exactly happened in the book? Now, the details of what happened during the Dance of Dragons is detailed in George R. R. Martin's book titled Fire and Blood. In fact, Fire and Blood is like the book version of a documentary and details the events of several hundred years, right from the arrival of the Fall of Valyria to the reign of Aegon III. Needless to say, the whole blood and cheese incident is also described in the book. So, let's uh, take a look. Firstly, Rhaenyra never really asks for Aemon in the book. Yeah, the Blacks know that Aemon needs to pay for what he's done, aka kebabicuing Arax and Lyceris. However, no one wanted the targeted killing of Aemon right after the tragic loss. Interestingly, this was as much a strategic choice that Emma Darcy's Rhaenyra makes because, you see, despite feeling all the grief of the world and wanting vengeance, she chose a target whose assassination would give her some sort of military advantage. If you killed Aemon, not only did you give the punishment he deserved, but you were also eliminating the Rider of Vagar, the largest living dragon, which could be compared to a reusable ballistic missile in the context of Westeros. Furthermore, he was one of the few good military commanders that the Greens had. When Missaria is contacted by Daemon, she wasn't his prisoner. In fact, it was actually Missaria who hired blood and cheese instead of Daemon, who was supposed to be in Harrenhal when the brutal murder of Jaehaerys Targaryen took place. As for Blood's profession, he was no longer serving as a city guard. In fact, he'd been disgracefully thrown out of the force after he killed a whore in a drunken rage. Cheese explains that he didn't know the blueprint of the upper levels of the Red Keep, where a different group of rat catchers worked. However, in the book, he knew the Red Keep like the back of his hand, and I mean, the entirety of the Red Keep. After entering the Red Keep, the two assassins enter Alicent's chamber and hide there after killing one of Alicent's maids. They knew very well that every evening Queen Helena brought her children to meet their grandmother, Alicent. However, the show tells us that Blood and Cheese didn't know where they were going and just happened to stumble upon the Queen's chamber, which was surprisingly, rather shockingly, unguarded. After this, they bound and gagged Alicent while waiting for Helena. 
When she arrives, they overpower her and ask which of her two sons she wants dead. Yep, apart from Jaehaerys, the elder son, Helena, also had Maelor, an infant boy. But Maelor doesn't exist in the show. The reason, as stated by showrunner Ryan Condal, is that time had to be compressed in such a way that the children of Helena and Aegon and Rhaenyra and Daemon are fairly younger than what they were in the book. While the Dance of Dragons essentially runs for about 30 years in the book, it runs for 20 in the show. Anyway, Helena points toward Maelor when forced by blood and cheese, assuming that young Maelor wouldn't understand what was happening to him, given his age. However, the assassins instead kill Jaehaerys and leave Maelor as a reminder of the fact that his mother chose him to die. This eventually led to Helena spiraling into madness. She stopped leaving her chambers, eating or bathing, and even stopped seeing Maelor, who was given by Aegon to Alicent to be brought up by her. Fia Saban, who plays Helena, thinks this change actually makes the scene even more gut-wrenching. Helena's forced to point out Jaehaerys directly, and that choice just haunts her. She feels cornered, like she's got no way out but to comply because the stakes are literally life or death for her kids. That kind of decision sticks with you. The Lord Commander of the King's Guard, Sir Kristen Cole, never had anything sexual with Alicent in the book, but the show tells another picture. Alicent was riding Kristen when Helena made her way to her mother's chambers. Now, Kristen should have been protecting the King's Chamber. Had they not been boning each other, Jaehaerys would have been saved because Cheese entered from the front door. So, the difference is that Alicent witnesses the beheading of her grandson in the book. But this whole thing has quite serious implications here. It'll fill Cole and Alicent with shame and guilt. They'd be forced to introspect and feel that Jaehaerys wouldn't have died if they behaved themselves. Additionally, Cole's hatred for Rhaenyra comes from the fact that she seduced him and made him break his oath, and he genuinely believed that she'd run away with him. However, he's breaking his oath with Alison ever so often while still hating Rhaenyra. Oh, the hypocrisy, which extends to Alison as well. In conclusion, Condal had to squeeze a lot into season one, so things had to change. Basically, in the show, Helena and Aegon's kids are younger than in the books. Because of that, the whole agonizing choice Helena had to make between Maelor and Jaehaerys got axed from the script. Now, about how they showed it on screen, Condal and the team decided to keep the actual killing off screen. They focused on Helena's reaction instead. The writers debated this a lot because they wanted to make sure it hit hard but wasn't just shock value. They aimed to make the whole thing feel like a heist that spiraled out of control and dragged us away from the main game with Daemon, Rhaenyra, Alicent, and Dagon and into this tragedy. The shift to Helena's POV is crucial. It's like we've been following these two hitmen, wondering what's next, and then BOOM! We're slammed into Helena's reality, seeing everything unfold from her perspective. It's her reaction that they really want us to feel. And to be honest, it wasn't the worst creative decision because focusing on Helena rather than Jaehaerys, who we really don't know much about, makes the scene more about the emotional impact than just the horror of the act itself. And as for Aegon, he'll no longer be concerned with petty things like dignity. He wants revenge, which is what he angrily says in the trailer. Regardless of your opinion of Aegon, his feelings after such an atrocity are understandable, and you can't fault him for wanting more blood using as much fire as is possible. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.